quarter is still there as what they call a light sheen on or near the surface, or it has turned into tar balls and been cleaned up or buried in the sand. Anderson, that's and, what they're saying has happened to all the soil. And it sounds like good news, but but the methodology, I mean, when you actually look at this report and the details, the, the methodology they use is not clear. And now some very reputable independent scientists are, are raising real questions about, you know, whether these figures are legit. Yeah, well, you know, and, and and that's a fair question, as I've raised before. And the truth is that when you talk to the people along the Gulf here, some of them buy all of this, but many emphatically do not. Over and over again, folks have told me that they think the government and BP, despite all of these pledges of transparency, have misled them and hidden information. That's what people on the Gulf keep telling me. And listen to what a woman said today in a fishing town here about this government report when I went down to talk to her. Her name is Phoebe Jones. If they're doing so good, why are all these people still here working? Why? Because they're not done. So you don't believe what you're being told? No, I don't. I mean, they sprayed all these dispersants and stuff, and it made the oil sink. So of course it's going to be off the top. Because it all sunk. Why would they be saying they're making all this progress if it's not true, though? Because they want to cover their butts. They actually want to cover their butts. Because they know they got more problems ahead. Because when all these other people around here start getting sicker and sicker, they'll see it. A new survey out of Columbia University of 1,200 coastal residents shows she's not alone in her anger or her doubt. One in five say they've lost income to the spill. About one in ten say they've lost their jobs. And a quarter think that they will have to move away from the Gulf as the true impact finally becomes known, Anderson. Yeah, and Ken Feinberg says that mental health issues are not going to be paid for uh, counseling and the like is not going to be paid for in this $20 billion fund. And I think, last I heard, BP still hadn't said whether or not they were going to pay the states. I know Louisiana long ago, months ago, had asked for, for millions, a few million, for mental health counseling and stuff. Uh, I think they haven't gotten word on that. We'll double check on that tomorrow. Um, but local officials, how are they reacting to all these new studies? Well, well, I'll tell you, Anderson, what they're doing is they are pressing fast and hard right now to make sure that BP and the feds stay engaged on the cleanup and restoration of the economy here. I'll tell you what President Obama said, I think makes people nervous here because they feel like that's the disengagement, you know, problem solved. They know here that their states have lost tourism by one estimate, maybe up to $23 billion worth over the next three years. Untold numbers of animals have been injured or killed and miles of habitat soiled. I say untold because when you talk about contamination of a nursery area for, area for some species, the impact might not be known for years and could be very bad. And of course, there is no complete tally on all the jobs lost, no real sense of how much trouble Gulf seafood producers are going to have <coughs> selling their products when this is all clear. That's why some local leaders here are saying very loudly tonight, make no mistake about it, the crisis for them is not past. Yeah, and even, even the scientists who are, the NOAA scientists who announced this, uh, this new report, today very publicly said, well, look, when, when press said, look, you know, we're, we're not trying to give the impression this thing is over. We're not going to know for years the impact of a lot of this stuff. Uh, Tom will continue to follow. Tom Former, thanks very much tonight.